Hey guys, please you're on this channel is for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. So it's been a while. Haven't had too much to say. Haven't felt compelled to make a video, but here we go as we're grinding sideways some more on the Bitcoin. A lot of stuff going on with Bifinex versus everybody else. I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, but the best thing you could do is look at an index, which may or may not include Bifinex. That's up to you. This index does. This index includes every exchange that has quote-unquote real volume. You can look at the list on the Brave New Coin website. Uh, this is available on TradingView for free. Uh, the ticker is BLX. Anyway, I'm not shilling this. I'm just saying it's easier than like typing in all these exchanges and then losing it on TradingView. Uh, so what everyone's looking at at this point, obviously, is the massive triangulation, either a descending triangle demarcated by the Horizontal support at around 59.50 on the index, maybe a little higher depending on how cheeky you want to get. Maybe it's at 6100, that's okay too. When I'm drawing this stuff, I also like to look at prior events. Does it match these events, these previous highs? So again, that's up to you depending on how you want to do that. It'll certainly change things like how far we are along in the triangle. I think no matter how you draw it, we're at least 80% in, which is massively, massively consolidated at this point. Triangles typically move 75% or more, so it's it's definitely primed and ready. If you're not looking at the descending triangle, perhaps you're looking at the falling wedge, which people may, may not agree with me that even exists, but that's demarcated by this purple line. And again, I'm looking at previous events, and it it uh, bisects that or whatever goes through that area. And we just have point after point after point after point. And uh, the falling wedge would bring us to February maximum. The current descending triangle, depending on how you draw it, sometime in January maximum. I don't know how things are going to look through Christmas, through, uh, you know, Western holidays. Don't expect like a lot of volume, but there was last year, so you never know if this mess hasn't broken up or down by then. And I'm just thinking, like, if we're still sideways by Christmas, what are the odds that we do something? I don't really know. Um, again, that depends on how you draw this, but I sort of like it down here, matching this wick, matching this high. So 5,900, 6, 6, uh, 5,900, 6,000, something like that. Anyway, for both of these... There's pretty much one diag, diag you can use. Uh, this is probably the most conservative. You can move it down to here. Again, that will affect how and where and why we break out when we do. We, I think bottom line though, on all of this, we still haven't seen any volume. Uh, this volume was all Tether Exodus from Bifinex at the time. Uh, it certainly looks good for up, but there's way too much uncertainty still I think um, everything else is moving up that's not Bitcoin which is a good thing for the space <laughs> if you're a speculator you know it bodes well that things are breaking up elsewhere um, the other part about price right now it's above the roughly drawn median of the falling wedge if we look at uh, these few times where it sort of was either up or down and we look at where we are we're above it so I'm optimistic. If we look at cloud, we have some time before we, we're, we are above the cloud, which is fine. That just points to uncertainty. Again, the triangle does. There's no surprise there. All this stuff is using the same data. If you look at the 5200, it's basically at the 50 on the daily. 200 is around 7100, just like the cloud. Like So this zone is really the, the breakout point regardless of the triangle, just based on the trend indicators. If you're basing it on a chart pattern, I would probably say 67, 68, something in there is the most conservative. The least conservative would say we've already broken out. So again, that's up to you and your book and your at-home game. But in general, I don't expect any of this to be a fake out. We might get a bull trap. Who knows? But I don't think I think any move is going to be the move at this point. And let's just look at it in Bitfinex real quick. So this Wyckoff thing I've been following 
for a while since February. Well, it was after February, but um, the narrative that I've been following <laughs> on Bitfinex with the Wyckoff thing looked really great up until this point, you know, when things started to break down. Because up until here, it was a carbon copy of Wyckoff. And now we're just sideways. And you can see on the line graph a little easier how sideways we've been since September. It's pretty much a $500 zone the price has been restricted to. Interesting stuff. RSI that I thought was coiling for a move. Coiled that didn't go anywhere. Um, targets for this are the same. They have been the same the whole time based on the falling wedge. If you're looking at the descending triangle of FNX, same thing. Targets are about the same. You know, it's going to, if it goes up, it's going to hit the yearly pivot. I don't have any doubts in my mind that that's the case. What will most likely happen is something like a crazy overshoot to like 13 and then falling below to 10 and then like consolidating around 11.5 for like three, six months, something like that. If we move up again, it's certainly looking like we will. Uh, I don't really know at this point. Uh, yes or no. The bears are just as confident as they've ever been, which is fine. Uh, we've, we're net long for the first time since August on open interest as far as Bitfinex is concerned. That may or may not mean anything, I don't know. If you're looking at this other triangle, again, we're pushing above that. Uh, CME stuff has kind of had no effect. We did have a nice down thrust on the CME open of the last contract, but there's been no follow through on any of that. Just tells me again that all this stuff is consolidating around the triangles and nothing else really. Uh, this tether stuff, which I'm really sick of talking about, is looking fine to me. I mean, it's certainly not within the normal ranges as far as historically. You know, it's a little, a little below where it usually is. It likes this 996, 997 zone. And the same thing with the premium. Percentage-wise, it's, I don't know, less than 1%. But the fact that it isn't coming down and isn't staying down or trying to, it's a little concerning to me, not from a is Bitfinex sol insolvent, but uh, just a market-wide sort of thing. Um, like I said somewhere else prior, I don't expect anything to happen price-wise until this stuff gets straightened out, and it looks like it pretty much is, but I don't know. You know, this could be another reason why we're not doing anything price-wise. The market's just sort of paused, waiting. And then everybody's been talking about this, weekly B-bands, uh, these are historically the times so 2016, basically. This was all, we can look at it. It was all ascending triangle stuff or Wyckoff accumulation stuff. So this was Wyckoff accumulation. This was ascending triangle. And then this was post Bitfinex hack. So those are historically the three times we've been this tight for this long. All three times we broke up. During the Wyckoff accumulation, we were below the median. The other two times, we were, we were above the median. Somebody was asking me about my verbiage on what I mean by bearish bias. It's pretty simple. If it's below the 20 SMA, the simple moving average, which is what this red line in the B-bands is, if it's below that, there's a bearish bias. And you can see it's been below the 20 SMA, basically, since the beginning of the year. If we break above that, then you're bullish. That's just how it is. It's either bullish or bearish. It's not in between. It's not neutral. Obviously, based on everything else, it looks neutral more than anything. Um, but just as we stand, that's how it looks. And you can look at percent B. You can see how we've consolidated. This is just uh, above or below the median. So 50 is the exact median. And you can see we're just below that. And again, the prior two times, we consolidated above, consolidated above. Uh, we actually broke the median here, so that's something I'm looking for as well, just in a different fashion, breaking the 20 SMA. And the RSI is very similar to percent %B, and again, you can see weekly we've just been below the 50 the whole time, just solidifying the confluence of bearish momentum. So let's take a look at ETH. So this is an Ethereum index, not available on TradingView yet, I'm trying to get it a pushed on training so people can use it, but uh, ETH is a lot simpler in my mind just because there's a lot less complexity in the market structure. Uh, obviously, massive bear trend. This is daily double cloud settings. 
that hasn't been breached. We haven't even had a uh, Kijun bounce until today. You can see uh, Kijun matching Tenkin here. Uh, it hasn't had a 200 tap since uh, May, June, sorry. Uh, so it's it's due for mean reversion in that respect. The fundamental concerns I have are the inflation stuff. I think it's a big deal that it's above 7% annually. I don't know if anybody else cares, <laughs> but that's just one concern that I have. Yeah, it's going to get reduced by late January at the earliest, but that's got to have selling pressure on things. Um, the other thing we're looking at here was the possibility of further lows. I'm not going to bring it up or show it, but there's a zone between 100 and 150. You can see historically just has had zero volume, which means uh, path of least resistance would be down. Not saying that'll happen, but if it does, I wouldn't be surprised because it'll it'll find this next zone of liquidity or order block, whatever you want to call it, uh, down here at 100, where it had previous price history. Um, it is interesting that we're below this moment of 300 zone. Sorry, I can't draw and talk at the same time. So we're below the the previous breakout point, previous support resist point, however you want to look at it. This is where we're likely headed if we do break up. I don't think it's going to shoot past the 200 anytime soon. Uh, another pit stop would be the break point, 283. And you can see it'll trigger an edge to edge trade once it enters the clouds. That's another thing I'm really paying attention to here. Uh, this is the trade, the 220 to 340 is really the trade that I'd look for high confidence probability wise. Um, you're waiting for bullish TK cross, which would be the first since uh, June, the first TK cross since June. It's a good sign that things have flipped. Uh, and then after that, you're looking for this entry above 220, let's say. And really, that's all I'm looking at on ETH. There's not much else. Uh, I'm glad it's not as complex as Bitcoin because that's just one last thing to worry about. Um, so yeah, it, it looks bullish now more than anything. Uh, I don't really remember what open interest is on... Bitfinex on open interest for ETH on max is like near an all-time high and at an all-time high, so that's kind of nuts. Uh, that's all I have for this one. Let me know what you think. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe. Hit me up on Twitter, and happy trading.